Hey there, I'm going to show you how to remove a wrinkle using Adobe Photoshop Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop. What I have open here is a photograph by Mark Nowak. And as you can see in the background on the backdrop, there's a bit of a wrinkle that probably didn't show up live in the uh, studio. And it's coming right down behind the subject's head. There's also a smaller wrinkle here behind the baby's head. I guess the baby probably is the, the main subject here of the image. Look how cute she is. So uh, we're looking at this image here and we think, how do we remove this? So generally, the method in Lightroom for removing spots is using the spot healing tool. Um, and you get to that by clicking this, uh, this round shape here or pressing Q on your keyboard. And this comes up, this little menu over here. You get to adjust the size of your brush to be larger or smaller. The opacity in case you, you don't want to remove all of the noise or all of whatever it is that you're having to be removing. And, uh, and then essentially what you do is you will go into your area of the image and like, let's say for example, over here, there's kind of some kind of a texture or something up here that maybe you don't want that. And the first thing you'll do is you'll click on that part of the image you want to remove and another circle will come up. And the other circle, if you drag it far enough away, you'll see it's got an arrow pointing to this. And what that's indicating to you is that this is the sampled area that you're taking new pixels from. And this is the area of transplantation where you're putting those pixels. Now, the way that Lightroom handles this is over here, you have two options in Lightroom, clone or heal. Now, when I click either of these, you'll see there's a little bit of a difference that happens. A little bit brighter with clone, about average with heal. And the reason for that is with the cloning tool, it's actually sampling the pixels directly and copying them over. It is a direct clone. With the healing tool, what's happening is taking the noise of this area and it's applying that noise and texture and everything else to this area, but it's retaining the original luminosity and values of this area. So if I were to heal along, like down this dark area, for example, I'll click a new spot right here. And if I'm going to grab from say up here to get some, you know, I'll grab this, this line. I'll, I'll go right where this wrinkle is. And you'll see it kind of appears down there and it's retaining the luminosity values of the area where you were patching. Uh, but if I click clone, it's going to be really bright because it's just directly copying it. So let me get rid of these two areas. And the main focus here is getting rid of this large wrinkle in the center and also this wrinkle right here. And how do we do that? Well, it takes a little while in Lightroom. You can click and select and click again and select another clean area. And eventually, once you have so many of these, and you can make them very large too, if you want to hit a lot of space at once, you can use a huge brush. But I don't know about you, but Lightroom not exactly as fast as Photoshop and not as robust, and I'll show you how. So how I'm going to fix this is I'm going to jump over with this image to Photoshop. And how you do that is you just right click on the image anywhere or down on your, what is this called, a, a film strip, I think. <laughs> and you right click and you go edit in Adobe Photoshop. And I'm just, for this purpose, I'm going to edit the original. Mark has done all the edits on his photo here and it's about ready to go except for the, uh, the, the wrinkle here. So I'm going to click edit and it's going to jump over to Photoshop. You see my Photoshop probably looks a lot different than a lot of your Photoshop's because I'm have a special interface that, that I work with in my comics. And I'm going to go over here to the toolbar and this might, your toolbar on yours might look like, like this, or it might be a long strip on the left side. It, it most likely is over here actually, but it doesn't matter. Find that window inside Photoshop. And in this window, underneath the eyedropper tool, looks like an eyedropper, you'll see probably what looks like this, a band-aid, right? And that's a good tool to use too, but what we're gonna use instead is its older brother, the patch tool. And you can also get to these by pressing J, and to cycle through any tool in Photoshop, you just press Shift on your keyboard and the corresponding letter. So if I press Shift and J, it's cycling through, if you look over here where that band-aid is, it's cycling through these different tools. Now, I want the one that's the patch tool and it's shaped like a, a patch you would put on a pair of jeans. And what this does essentially is the same thing as the spot healing brush in Lightroom, except for you have complete control over the mask that you're using. In Lightroom, you only have a circular mask and you can only select 
uh, your opacity and your method, clone or heal. But in Photoshop, you have unlimited resources as far as uh, your selection goes. So I'm going to zoom in, get a little closer to this wrinkle, and I'm going to click that tool again, or you can press J or Shift J until you find it. And essentially on mine and on most people's uh, version of Photoshop, it's just going to look like a, a crosshair. And what you're doing here is the same thing as if you're using the lasso tool. It's creating a marquee selection. And as I draw here in this area, I'm going to stay kind of clear of her hair. And I'll tell you why in a second. And as soon as I have this whole area selected here, I'm going to let go. And I have a really pretty selection uh, because I'm using a stylus pen to do this. If uh, you're using a trackpad or a mouse, it might take a little longer. But I'm going to let go, and you see it turns into the black and white marching ants. Now that I have the marching ants, that selection is made. Now, for future reference, if you're ever having to make a really, really fine selection like hair or uh, you know anything that has feathering or is not just a hard edge selection, you can, in Photoshop, press Q, which takes you into quick mask mode. It's also a button down here, which just looks like a square with a selection in it. You can click that. And what we're seeing here is our selection. It's showing up as a alpha transparency. Now, just imagine it as red pixels, and it might look a little different on yours. If I wanted to make this a finer selection, I can grab a brush tool by pressing B on the keyboard or clicking the paintbrush over here. And let's say I want to make a really interesting shape. I can click any one of my custom brushes, or I'll just click this one, which is like the airbrush that comes with Photoshop, and I'll start painting around. And as you see, I've got a nice, let me pull my opacity up there, I've got a nice feathered edge here. So if I wanted to select something like I don't know, a cloud and not have a hard edge around it when I modify that area, uh, you know, where the sky will suddenly look like fake, like uh, a trap door is in the sky or something like that. You want to have a softer selection. But for these purposes, we're going to forego that. I'm just going to edit and undo that. that I just did. And we have this selection like we uh, did a minute ago with the patch tool. I'm going to go back to the patch tool by pressing J or clicking right here. And just like in Lightroom, we're going to drag this, kind of finding our new sample area. And as soon as we drag that, we're going to let go. And it's copying the texture from this area right here, but retaining the luminosity of what we see right here. Right? I'm just going to make sure I don't have feathering turned on in my selection as well. And what I like to do after I do this, uh, I like to grab in the area I've already sampled and, and fixed, or I'm sorry, the area I've already fixed, I like to grab this area and just take little selections and drag it elsewhere. Because what happens is there's a tiling effect where, say for example, you're copying the same constellation over and over again, you're going to start seeing the Big Dipper everywhere. So with this in mind, I'm going to click here and pull this selection over here and just grab another area and say right there and see that was actually a bad choice. I'm going to undo that. Also with the patch tool up on your menu here you have two choices. You can do content aware or normal. I'm going to set this to normal. And adaptation when you're in content aware, adaptation you can select different options here to make the feathering around your selection and the amount of area that it samples beyond what you've selected for luminosity values, uh, it'll make it uh, either loose or strict. And you can see what that looks like uh, you know, if you try that out. So I'm going to go back to normal. And I'm just going to keep copying little sections here. And I'm still keeping kind of clear of her hair. And all right. Now then, when I have this done, I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to find this little end of the area where the crease is in the fabric. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the brush tool in Photoshop. And the reason for that is if I use the patch tool or any other type of tool, if I use that, it's going to probably sample from her hair for the contrast values of the, the luminosity. And it's going to drag like a weird shadowy thing with some of the color. And you see this is a very low resolution image, but it still has that effect where some of the orange-red tones in the hair kind of blurring out into the background here suddenly. Now, instead of using the patch tool to fix this last little bit here, I'm going to click that and move up to the 
healing brush tool. No, that's not what I'm going to do. Instead of using the normal patch tool, I'm going to go up here to the menu and select the content aware patch tool. It looks the same, but it gives you some other options right here for adaptation. I want to select that very, I'm going to set that to very loose. And now I'm going to go back here and carefully select that area that I want to affect. All right. And I'm going to grab over here, move that. Boom. Now for the little one, I'll just do the same steps that I did before. I'm going to use the normal patch tool, select this big area here. Once I have it selected, I've got my margin ants. I drag this up here. Boom. And uh, with a higher resolution image, you can get in really close and remove things happening behind hair and all kinds of great stuff like that. Really get super specific with your edits. So I'm just going to quickly remove a couple more of these. I'll take care of this one. And you can also press shift on your keyboard while you're drawing. And then when you're done selecting that area, you have more than one selection. And when you drag this, it's going to take both of them and fix them both at the same time. And you can do this to, you know, just about any area. An easy way uh, to fix something like a telephone wire is you can make a selection using the lasso tool or the polygonal lasso tool. And let's pretend there's a telephone wire going this away. You can click that, click, click, or just like double click anywhere to finish it up. And say you have somewhere in this area, a two pixel wide telephone wire. And what you'll do is you'll go to filter, noise, dust and scratches. Dust and scratches, uh, what essentially it does, it allows you to select a radius that you want to be averaged and blurred and a threshold so that high contrasty sharp areas remain. So if you want to select a, let's say, telephone wire in front of a building, it's an easy way that, that doesn't always look perfect, but if you're in a pinch and you need to get rid of a line or something that's really distracting, you can do it quickly like that. So once you're done with that, you save the image and load it back up in Lightroom and you should be ready to go. Thanks for watching.